What's up YouTube? I hope each and every one of you guys are healthy and enjoying life today. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the 2024 Nissan Pathfinder Rock Creek. Huge thank you to Tyler Crowder over at Safford Brown Nissan of Fairfax, Virginia for allowing me to do this video for you guys today. If you are interested in this particular Pathfinder or any Nissan product, I'll be sure to have Tyler's information on screen as well as in the description box down below. But with that said, let's get into the video. All right, well, like usual, first we're gonna talk about the exterior and the performance. So like I said, this is a 2024 Nissan Pathfinder Rock Creek. And this particular one has been painted in obsidian green, which is definitely the color to get if you're gonna be getting the Rock Creek because I think it just suits it very, very nicely. I know the camera's not gonna pick it up. On the camera, it looks black, uh, but in the direct sunlight, this is a really, really nice paint color. And again, I just think it suits the Rock Creek very, very nicely. Um, another thing I wanted to mention is that for 2024, there have not really been any changes from the 2023 to the 2024 model year for the Pathfinder. And if you can't tell, the Rock Creek is the off-road variant of the Pathfinder. It looks sweet, it looks like an off-roader, and it can tackle, you know, the majority of the terrain that you're gonna throw at it, but don't expect this thing to be like a Jeep. Don't expect it to be like, you know, vehicles like that, but it can tackle, you know, the majority of the terrain that you're gonna be throwing at it. But this is more of a daily driver that looks pretty cool. But as standard with the Rock Creek, you get LED headlights with high beam assist, as well as LED daytime running lights, standard turn signals, and LED defog lights now taking a step back and to the left let's take in the entire front end of the rock creek so you can see you get a rock creek specific front grill and front fascia so i guess we might as well start with the grill so you do get a gloss black mesh front grill with a gloss black grill surround and those three silver grill nostrils at the top of the grill these are the grill nostrils in question. You can see you have your Nissan logo located at the center of your mesh grill. And then just beneath your Nissan logo is where you will find your forward facing camera. That forward facing camera comes standard on the Rock Creek and it works with your 360 degree view camera system. So if you are gonna be taking this thing off road, you do have the intelligent around view monitor. So let's say, you know, there's a big rock right here that you don't necessarily see from the driver's perspective. You can press the camera button on the infotainment system and it's basically going to help you protect your wheels, which they should be protected anyway. You got a 60 uh, aspect ratio tire or whatever. You got a pretty thick tire is basically what I'm trying to say. But coming down just a little bit more, you get a satin black front bumper as well as some silver lower grill trim. So they actually call this the front fascia. I like to call it the lower grill trim because you get a satin black lower grill down here. Um, and then Rock Creek, or specific to the Rock Creek, you get a 5 eighths of an inch suspension lift for a total ground clearance of 7.7 .7 inches. So like I was mentioning, you know, you can go over the majority of the terrain that you're going to be throwing at this. But ground clearance wise, it doesn't have a ton of ground clearance, but you can go through quite a bit of snow with that ground clearance with these tires and with this four wheel drive system. So this is very capable. Just keep in mind, uh, you do get a ground clearance of 7.7 .7 inches, but coming down the side, one thing that matches your satin black front um, bumper is that you also do get these satin black wheel arch moldings. Also specific to the Rock Creek, you get an off-road tuned suspension. This particular one has been optioned with the $220 splash guards, which are basically these things behind all four of your wheels and tires to help protect you know, the doors and the rear bumper from all the debris that's gonna be flying up from these beefy tires. But speaking of the wheel and tire setup, Specific to the Rock Creek again, you get these 18 inch gloss black beadlock style wheels that are wrapped in 265 60 Toyo Open Country All Terrain tires. I love the side profile of these tires. You can see the sidewall. I also really like the way that these wheels look. They do look like a beadlock capable wheel, but they are not actually, they just look like it. And then here's a view of the tread pattern on these tires. Not something you'd expect to see on a Pathfinder, but nonetheless, it is pretty cool but coming up to our side view mirrors you know how we do it you get body color mirror caps with integrated turn signals and as standard these side view mirrors are heated manual folding you get your blind spot monitoring on the upper left hand side of your driver side mirror and on the upper right hand side of your passenger side mirror and then last but not least again as standard with the rock creek you get the 360 degree view camera system so you do get the side view camera right there on the bottom of your side view mirror 
Now we might as well do a side profile shot of this thing. This is what it looks like here on the side. It looks pretty beefy with that roof rack up top as well as, you know, those really beefy wheel and tire setup or that we real that really beefy wheel and tire setup. So, speaking of our roof rack with the Rock Creek, you get this black tubular roof rack as standard and let's say you wanted to, you know, put stuff up top there like a tent or something like that just keep in mind that you do have a 220 pound capacity for that roof rack up top there again this thing just adds to the beefiness or the overlander look of the uh, rock creek i think it looks pretty sweet now here's a rear three quarter shot of the pathfinder rock creek you do get a capless filler neck just keep in mind nissan does recommend premium fuel so when you open this thing up it lets you know premium fuel is recommended for maximum performance you don't necessarily have to put premium in this uh, but if you want the full horsepower the full torque then you're going to want to put premium in this again you do get that capless filler neck back in there Again, I just really like the way that this thing looks, but coming back over to here, you do get gloss black window trim at the top of your windows, and then you get the satin black window trim at the bottom of the windows. You also get body color door handles with keyless access. Just keep in mind, the keyless access function is only for your front two door handles. The rear two door handles do not get that keyless access function. And then also only on your front two doors is where you'll find your Rock Creek badging. So where it says Rock Creek is satin black, and then those like mountain, like design back there is in the orange accenting and then you get this satin black door cladding at the bottom of the doors and then you can see it says pathfinder only on the rear two doors and that is it for the side profile of this thing now coming around back up top here you get a body color shark fin antenna you also get a body color roof spoiler as well you get some black trim here you also get some black trim there that i did leave out and then coming around back as standard with the rock creek you get LED taillights. You also get a rear window defroster. You get a rear wiper. And then up top here, integrated into your roof spoiler is where you will find your third brake light. Now I'm gonna take the D-tag off so you get a better view of what it looks like back here. So you can see where the taillights connect. There's actually some gloss black trim and then you have your Nissan logo at the center of that gloss black trim. Then your Pathfinder and your Rock Creek badging back here is satin black you get your four-wheel drive badging on the lower right hand side of your lift gate that is also satin black speaking of the lift gate this is a manual lift gate which i would have liked to see a power lift gate as standard uh, but again you do get a manual lift gate all you got to do is put your hand underneath here feel on that pad and then pull up on it yourself and that is what that looks like and it reveals Obviously, this is a three row SUV. So I'd say from about here to here, you have about two and a half feet of storage space back here. And then this reveals the only interior option that this vehicle has. So these are the $340 Rock Creek all weather mats. So um, I wish I could get you a better view, but basically you can see it says Pathfinder and then it says Rock Creek. I know the GoPro is not gonna pick it up all that well, but you can see it, it says, rock creek right there and then it says pathfinder there you know it's basically what floor mats look like uh, and then if i pulled this out if i lifted this up also included with that uh, are these uh seat back mats and then the cargo mat down here as well but lifting this thing up i'd say you have about 10 to yeah about 10 inches of depth down in here for some storage space you can set what you need to like jumper cables maybe some snacks some peanut butter uh, maybe a blanket or two down underneath there. Then you also get these grocery bag hooks. You get one on each side. That's what they each look like. Um, and then that's kind of about it for what we got going on here in the trunk space. You also get a light up top here that is halogen. It is not LED. And again, that's kind of about it for what we got going on here in the trunk. I guess if you wanted some more storage space, all you gotta do, push that seat forward and then you get another three and a half, four feet of storage space with the third row seats down. But Closing this back up, actually, I guess I wanna show you what that looks like. So with those down, you can see you get about three and a half, four feet more storage space. So quite a bit more storage space with the third row seats. But then all you gotta do to lift them back up is pull on this strap and now they are back into their original position. Closing that back up, I didn't close it all the way. It doesn't sound like, maybe it did, I don't know. Um, but yeah, that is it for that. Coming down just a little bit more, you get four parking sensors back here as standard as well as two reflectors. You get a satin black rear bumper. Just above your license plate is where you will find your backup camera. 
and then coming back just a little bit more you can see you get a trailer hitch you also get your seven pin connector for a trailer on the right hand side of your trailer hitch and then speaking of the trailer hitch you get a max tow capacity of 6,000 pounds when you get the rock creek so plenty capable um, so if you got a big boat you can tow your big boat you got side by sides you can tow the side by sides you got atvs so on and so forth as long as it's under 6,000 pounds so this thing is plenty capable if you you know like to do camping and stuff like that this might be the three row suv for you but with that stuff out of the way let's move into performance pop it open that hood reveals that 3.5 liter naturally aspirated v6 that makes 295 horsepower and 270 pound feet of torque when running on premium fuel it is mated to a nine speed automatic transmission for a zero to 60 time in 6.8 seconds and if you were wondering about fuel economy you can achieve 20 miles per gallon in the city 23 miles per gallon on the highway for 21 miles per gallon combined with four wheel drive considering this thing's got some beefy tires on it considering it's a three row suv and considering its towing capacity i'd say those fuel economy figures are pretty dang good for what you get but if you're enjoying the video so far today please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up please hit that subscribe button i'm on my journey to 100,000 subscribers and i cannot get there without your support i just hit 21,000 subscribers so thank you all for subscribing thank you all for your continued support i see each and every one of my supporters day in and day out so i appreciate each and every one of you guys but again if you've enjoyed if you learned anything from this video take a second give it a thumbs up leave a comment in the comment section down below and hit that subscribe button the likes and comments look very good for my channel in the youtube algorithm and that is what helps me grow but with that stuff said, let's move into the interior. Moving on into the interior, like I mentioned earlier in the video, you do get keyless access. So all you have to do is have your key fob in your pocket, walk up to the vehicle, put your hand behind the door handle and the vehicle will unlock. You can also lock the vehicle by running your finger across those three hash marks right there. And now it is locked. Two beeps is locked. One singular beep is unlocked. And now I wanna walk you through a couple of the functions on the key fob. Starting from the top, you have your remote start function, which comes standard with the Rock Creek. Then like any other key fob, really, you have your lock, your unlock, and your panic functions. If you wanted to remote start the vehicle, you have to lock it first and then press and hold on this button. And that is what it sounds like when it fires up here from the exterior's perspective. But now, Let's take a look at what we got going on here in the interior with the Rock Creek. So with the Rock Creek, it may start playing um, music here, so I might have to turn it down. But anyways, with the Rock Creek, you get these leatherette appointed seats with the orange accenting for your Rock Creek uh, stitched into the seat as well as the orange accent colored stitching. But now taking a look at our door panel, you get some leatherette at the top. You get some orange accent colored stitching. You get a black door handle. You have your unlock and your lock functions. Your power side view mirror controls are here. Then you get automatic up and down windows at all four corners. Pressing on this button is going to restrict your passenger window privileges. Then you get a nicely padded armrest, good amount of miscellaneous storage space at the bottom of the door panel. You also get a speaker and a spot you could set a uh, water bottle or a coffee cup, you know, something like that down there. And then again, this is what your front seats look like. They are very, very comfortable. You have to sit in one to see what I'm talking about. It's almost like sitting in a recliner at home. That is kind of like where my first impressions when I first sat in these seats. But anyways, as standard, you get a 10-way power driver seat with two-way power lumbar, and then you get a four-way manual passenger seat over there. Both front seats are heated as standard, and I just really like the way that the seats look. I love the Rock Creek um, stitched into the seat back as well as on the armrest as well. I think that is just a very nice touch. But now I'm gonna step into the interior and then let's see what we're working with here on the interior. So basically I'm just gonna walk you throughout all the different things you can do here on the interior, starting over here. So with these buttons here, this is to brighten and or dim your gauge cluster as well as your backlit buttons. Pressing on this button right here is basically um, to turn the steering assist on or off. So this does have pro pilot assist which is kind of like a semi-autonomous driving system. So basically um, it combines like adaptive cruise control with like the steer assist. So it will steer for you. And then it'll also modulate the throttle. Let's say uh, if you're on the highway, it's going to, you know, keep your speed um, to where it needs to be. So if the car in front of you is going 55, but you're going 70, cause that's what you have your cruise control set to. It's gonna slow the vehicle down. That's how adaptive cruise control works. But anyways, uh, coming over to here, 
Flipping this thing down gives you access into your manual tilting and telescoping steering wheel. So you can see, you can bring the steering wheel towards you, you can push it away from you, and then you can also move it up and down until you find your comfortable position, and then lock it in place once you find your comfortable position. Now, let's take a listen to the turn signal. That is what the turn signal sounds like. Not only is this your turn signal control stock, this is also your headlight control stock, your fog light control stock, and your automatic high beam uh, button is also on this stock. So this is to turn your automatic high beams on or off. Nissan calls it high beam assist. Right now, the headlights are in the automatic position. That is headlights always on. This is parking lights on, and then that is headlights in the always off position. And then this is fog lights off, this is fog lights on, and that kind of concludes um, this steering wheel, or this, excuse me, this stock on this side. Now, zooming back out, you do get a leather wrapped steering wheel with steering wheel mounted paddle shifters. So you have your downshift paddle on the left, you have your upshift paddle over here on the right. And just like any other vehicle, you have your horn at the center. So let's take a listen to the horn. That is what the horn sounds like on this vehicle. And then obviously you can see on the right-hand side of your steering column, you have your windshield wiper control stock for your front wipers and your rear wiper. But moving on from there, let's go throughout the controls on the steering wheel. I guess one other thing is that you do get orange accent colored stitching on the inside of the steering wheel. But here are your volume controls. You can see these two buttons as well as this scroll knob. That is to control your productivity screen located at the center of your gauges. And then this is to go backwards on a track. This is to go forwards on a track. And then this button right here is also um, to bring you throughout those gauges on that system, which I'll get into here in a second. But like I mentioned, um, this vehicle does come standard with intelligent cruise control. So here are your intelligent cruise control settings. All of this that I'm circling right now is all your intelligent cruise control stuff. This is like your pro pilot assist on or off. This right here is gonna pop up my phone stuff on the infotainment system. And that will also pick up and or hang up on a phone call as well. Uh, and then this is to speak to the vehicle here. But now let's move into our gauge cluster. So on the left, you have your tachometer, also known as your RPM gauge. Then you have your coolant temperature gauge down here, speedometer over here, and then this is your fuel gauge down here. And then right now, this is what the screen looks like uh, most of the time. It's got the time, it's got the temperature, it's got your driving assistance stuff on screen right now. Then it has the fuel range, transmission status stuff. Uh, and then this right now is the, uh, what's it called? The uh, odometer. I do believe auto is the drive mode that we are in at the moment. So yes, we were in auto mode. So this is where it lets you know what drive mode you are in. I'll get into that stuff here in a second, but first I wanna go throughout this screen. Um, so right now, just scrolling down, these are your two driver assistance screens. Get those two. And then clicking over, all I'm doing is clicking to the left. I'm gonna start on the home screen. So this is the home screen. Um, so basically on the home screen, you have your digital speedometer readout as well as your audio stuff or media stuff. Then coming down one more, you basically have a calm screen that just displays nothing. Uh, that's what a calm screen is. And then coming over to here, basically you have your average speed and your digital speedometer readout. Then you have your manual reset and your drive computer, all of those different things down there. Then you have your uh, average fuel economy. Clicking over to the right brings you into this. So you can see your tire pressure stuff, but they only appear while you're driving. Uh, and then coming down one more, you got your auto stop start stuff. So basically, um, this is how long the vehicle has turned the auto stop start system off for uh, and how much uh, fuel it has saved as well. Basically 41 milliliters. Coming down one more, this is your um, four by four intelligence, your intelligent four wheel drive system. Basically shows you, you know, how much percentage um, the front wheels are powering the vehicle and how much percentage the rear wheels are powering the vehicle forward. So basically, if it's favoring front wheel drive, let's say it'll be shaded in 75% up top there. And then let's say it's favoring the rear uh, or do them both about the same, it's gonna be about 50% on both. So that is what that does. It's kind of like the best explanation for that. Clicking over, then you have your audio stuff. You have your driver assistance stuff, which I already went through. And then you have your different settings down through here uh, as well. All you gotta do is click okay and that will bring you into your different settings. Your VDC settings is your traction control stuff. Then you have all your driver assistance settings here. You can go take a look at all the features that this vehicle has driver assist wise. And then uh, you can see all your different settings throughout here, blah, blah, blah. You can go into your vehicle settings. You can go into your lighting settings. You can see all of these different things here but I'm not gonna mess with that. Basically, if this was my vehicle, I would have it on this screen with the digital speedometer readout. Anyways, that's just me. 
Coming over to here with the Rock Creek, you get an eight inch infotainment system with wired Apple CarPlay and wired Android Auto connectivity. So this is what the screen looks like. I'm gonna go into the home screen. So this is basically the home screen. You get the audio stuff. Then you swipe over here, you get a clock. Swipe over here one more time. Then you get all your audio sources. Uh, and then down here, you basically have your shortcut buttons to your phone, to your audio stuff, to your connections, info. Uh, and then you can go in between your different settings as well. Let's see, info. This is what the info screen looks like. Then you get your settings screen. This is one setting screen. This is your second setting screen. You get the time up top there. Um, and then I'm basically just gonna go back home. This is your physical home button. Brings you back into your home screen. Then you get a physical volume control knob. You get a physical tuning control knob. If you wanted to control your bass and all that kind of stuff, you press and hold on that. Then you get your bass. You get your middle. You get your treble. You get your balance and your fader. And then down here, you have all these physical controls. So basically this is gonna pop up your 360 degree view camera system. Again, the 360 cam comes standard. Click this one more time. It's gonna bring you into another camera view. And then it's gonna bring you into your uh, forward facing camera. And then that's basically about it for that. Coming over to here, you have your phone stuff. It's gonna pop up your phone stuff on screen. This is gonna bring you into your home screen. This is gonna bring you into your audio information. Uh, and then this is to go forwards and or backwards on a track. And then this is gonna bring you into night mode. Then that's gonna bring you into your auto mode. Um, and then you had your push button, start button, two HVAC vents, you have your hazard button. Coming down, you get a tri-zone climate control uh, system for this vehicle. So what that means is, uh, is that you get dual zone climate here, and then you get another climate zone for the rear passengers as well. This is what the climate control system looks like when it is on temperatures, fan speed, in the direction of which the air is flowing. Uh, and then you can also um, do the rear control. So if I click on that, it's going to control the rear. Um, and then you can also lock the rear and you can turn the rear on or off by the push of that button. You can control the rear by the push of this button as well. So basically you can see, you can change the temperature of the rear, so on and so forth. Um, that is what that does there. I'm gonna turn this back off. Um, and then again, like I mentioned, you get heated front seats as standard with three levels of adjustability. Heated seat button here for the driver, heated seat button here for the front passenger as well. Again, three levels of adjustability. Coming down, you get a USB A port, you get a USB C port. You also get a 12 volt power outlet down in there as well. Good amount of storage space down in there. You could set a phone, key fobs, just random items. Also could set a key fob there if you wanted to. This is what your gear shift selector looks like. So if you wanted to go into manual mode, right? And you can uh, control the transmission with these paddle shifters. Pull down, now we're in drive. Pull down one more time and now we are in manual mode and you get a one right there. So now you can control the transmission with the steering wheel mounted paddle shifters and then push Pete to go into park. Two cup holders. This is to turn your auto stop start system on or off. This is your electronic parking brake that will light up in red when it is engaged. If you wanted to disengage the parking brake, push your foot down on the brake, push against that, and then the parking brake will disengage. This is your auto hold button. So basically, if you're in traffic, you're tired of holding your foot on your brake in traffic, if you press on this button right here, basically the vehicle will hold you in place by itself with its braking system. Uh, and then press it on this. This is your hill descent control button. And then this is your drive mode selector. So you have seven different drive modes. We're gonna go throughout those. Over here, you got sand, then you got mud slash ruts, you got your snow mode, you got your auto mode, you got your eco mode, you got your sport mode, and your tow mode. But again, the center here is your auto mode, basically like your normal mode. Pathfinder, you get the Rock Creek stitched into the center fold down armrest. You can set some business cards here. You could set a pen right here as well. Maybe you could set uh, some uh, chapstick or something like that there. And then down in here, you get quite a bit of storage space. I'd say you probably have about 10 to 12 inches of depth down in there. So you can fit what you need to down in there for sure. And then coming over to the passenger side, you can see you get some leatherette on the dash. You get some orange accent colored stitching. You also get a spot you could set your phone up top here as well. And then you get a lockable lower glove box. Let me move this out of the way. You can fit what you need to in this glove box. See owner's manual is in there. You can fit your napkins, you can fit your straws, you can fit the essentials down in there. Coming up top here, you just get a standard rear view mirror. I'll put on screen if you can or you cannot get a auto dimming rear view mirror. Then this is where it lets you know if your passenger airbag is on or off. You get a spot you can set your sunglasses up top here as well. Uh, driver and passenger both get their individual lights. They are halogen. This is the light settings, whether you want the lights to turn on or not when you open up the doors. 
This is your instant dome light on button, basically turning all the interior dome lights on again by the push of that button. Then you get your SOS button, kind of like roadside assistance. And then opening this thing up, you get a vanity mirror and a vanity light, a spot you could set some paper products like business cards or registration. And then these visors slide forwards and backwards to your liking, dependent on where the sun is shining. The driver gets an Opu handle. The front passenger also gets an Opu handle. There's also some pass-through storage space down here as well. That is what it looks like. You can see, you can see my hand down in there. And uh, that's kind of about it for what we got going on here in these front seats. So a couple things I wanted to go over that you get as standard with this vehicle. You get the 10-way power driver's seat with the two-way power lumbar. You get the four-way manual passenger seat. You get the heated front seats, you get the intelligent cruise control system, you get the pro pilot assist, which is basically like the steering assist and the adaptive cruise control working together. You get the 360 degree view camera system. You get the second row captain's chairs followed by the second row removable center console. Um, and that's all I really wanted to go over. Obviously there's a ton of safety features that you can see now with the window sticker on screen. Um, take a look at the safety features, take a look at the two options that this vehicle has and basically take a look at whatever you want to, but I'm just gonna highlight the MSRP so the MSRP of the way that this particular 2024 Pathfinder Rock Creek is spec'd is $45,525. I think that's a pretty good deal. You know, this is a nice SUV. It rides very nice. The seats are very comfortable. You get 360 degree view camera system, rear sensors, adaptive cruise control, basically semi-autonomous driving. So very nice vehicle in my opinion for that price. I think it looks good. I think it drives great, which you'll see here in a minute, but I do wanna show you what we got going on here in these rear seats before moving into the driving portion of the video. This is what the rear door panel looks like. You can see you get a nicely padded armrest, two cup holders, automatic up and down windows here at the back. But right now, um, I do believe the window control is locked. So if I come around here, I'm gonna unlock the window control. Okay, now I have access to roll the windows down. We'll see how far the windows do roll down. Go down to about right there. Uh, and again, automatic up and down. Some miscellaneous storage space down there. This is what the second row seats look like. You can see their captain's chairs. They get the center fold down armrest. Uh, and then stepping on into these rear seats, you can see you have this control here. So these seats do recline. They've got quite a bit of reclinability, honestly. I can say I'm very comfortable now in these seats up for a road trip. Opu handle, HVAC vent, a dome light. And if you click on that, that is to turn the dome light on or off. You get a seat back pocket behind the driver's seat. Like I mentioned, you do get a tri-zone climate control system. So this is your climate control system for the second and third row passengers. Then you get a USB A port, you get a USB C port, you get a seat back pocket behind the passenger seat two cup holders good amount of miscellaneous storage space down in here again this is removable if you do not want that in here uh quite a bit of leg and knee room here's another view of my leg and knee room i am five foot nine and i am adjusted behind myself right now i have my seat reclined tons of headroom not even a question and i know even if i was sitting straight up i'd still have tons of headroom as you may be able to tell boom tons of it now let's see what we got going on here in these um, third row seat. So stepping into back here, basically, I don't know if I would even want to sit back here because it looks kind of cramped, but I'm going to do it anyway. For those of you who are wondering, yeah, definitely cramped back here. The third row seats are not as comfortable as they are in the second row, but let's see if I can't fold this seat back a little bit more. Okay. So these seats do recline. So now I'm a little bit more comfortable. But you can see, leg room is limited. I do believe I could slide these seats in the second row forward a little bit. So I could split the difference. And now I got a little bit more leg and knee room here. But you get two cup holders back here, two cup holders on that side. Uh, headroom, you know, good amount of headroom. Let's see, five foot nine. Yeah, I probably have another three inches of headroom. HVAC vent up top here, same thing over there. Uh, you'll see the dome light back here as well. And that's kind of about it for what we got going on here in the interior. So we've talked about the exterior, we've talked about the performance, and now we've talked about what's going on here in the interior of this vehicle. So I wanna see what this thing's like to drive as I'm assuming you guys do as well. So I will see you guys in the driver's seat. All right, now onto the driving portion of the video. Watch this acceleration.
Nissan, I can tell you one thing, this is what people want. People want an automatic transmission. People do not want a CVT and it seems like Nissan puts CVTs in literally everything and I'm so glad that they do not have a CVT in this because what's great about the Pathfinder is that it is up to date. At least it looks up to date on the interior for me. I still personally like analog gauges. Uh, I think analog gauges in the long term are going to um, look better than the digital gauge clusters that we see in pretty much every vehicle nowadays. I think this is gonna look better in 20 years than the digital clusters. That's just my personal opinion. I mean, you can take a look back at cars from the 80s here. Here's another little acceleration. Sounds great, but what I was saying is you can take a look at cars, you know, from the 80s that had the digital clusters. And in my opinion, I think that cars with from the 80s with the analog clusters look better. It's just my opinion. I know some people may disagree. Um, so that's why I think analog clusters will look better as time goes on. But basically, this thing rides great. Seats are very, very comfortable. And what's great about the powertrain is that it's very simple. You get a naturally aspirated V6. You get a nine speed automatic transmission. So it doesn't get much simpler than that. So it should theoretically not get much more reliable than what we have here today. And I could definitely see this thing being very reliable long-term because it's simple. It doesn't have turbos. Everything has turbos on it nowadays. And you know, over time it's just, Turbos are another thing to go wrong. Now, in the short term, I love turbos because you get the turbo sound, uh, and then you also get the performance of a turbo. But I think this thing is fast enough the way that it is now without a turbo. I think it sounds great. I love the induction noise of a V6, uh, and this sounds very good. It's got great power. It's got great low-end torque, uh, and the nine-speed is tuned very well, in my opinion, as well. Um, one thing I do like about the auto stop start system is that it will only engage if you really like push your foot further on the pedal than you normally would like at a stop. That is how you get the auto stop start system to engage, um, at least from what I've experienced the past couple times. Maybe it does that, you know, for owners, they're like, oh man, it does it all the time. But from my experience, the past three times that it um, has done it, I've like kind of done it purposefully. I've pushed further than I normally would. Um, so I definitely appreciate that. I hate vehicles that you know just auto stop start at every chance that they can get i'm not a fan of auto stop start i don't think anybody is a fan of uh auto stop start systems they suck whoever came up with them um should be sued no maybe maybe should be sued not actually but uh the sound system on this is actually surprisingly good i was surprised by the level of bass and clarity that it was giving me um, for a standard nissan sound system at that you know sometimes with nissan sound systems the standard ones actually i take that back because uh, my mom's uh like she had a 2019 nissan rogue she doesn't have that car anymore but the sound system on that, it was a standard sound system. And it was actually like pretty decent for a standard sound system. Uh, this one's actually pretty good. So instead of pretty decent, it's pretty good because it's got good clarity. Okay, the auto stop start system did turn on right there. Um, but this system is very good, uh, pretty good. But uh, when it comes to the infotainment system, it's very, very easy to use. It's very simple. It doesn't have a bunch of menus and stuff you gotta go through. I love how it still has the physical climate control stack. So in my opinion, I think this is what consumers still want. Yeah, they may want a more updated look on the interior, but I do believe that consumers appreciate physical climate controls. At least I know I do. I'd much rather have physical climate controls um, rather than having to go throughout a screen. I'm not a fan of going throughout a screen to control the climate. So definitely approved. Uh, give me a, th or I give a thumbs up to Nissan for this. Um, but overall, again, the seat comfort is great. You know, on certain bumps, it does feel like an off-road oriented vehicle. I mean, it does have an off-road tuned suspension, a nice M3 color right there. Um, so that is kind of what you would expect. But it, it's pretty compliant otherwise. You know, it's just that every occasional bump, you're like, okay, I can feel that. Uh, but other than that, I think it is great. You know, it rides great. I think the power level is pretty good as well. Um, the sound of the V6 sounds great. And it's just a great vehicle overall because I think it's going to be reliable long term. It's got a good sound system. I think it's got a great look to it in my personal opinion as well. Uh, and it's just simple. You know what I mean? I think simple uh, is what people... How? What? Why didn't I get the light? And I think people appreciate simple nowadays because 
there's not much left on the road that's you know being sold new that is still simple so i think people still appreciate the simplicity but that's it for today's video if you guys did enjoy the video please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up please hit that subscribe button i'm on my journey to 100,000 subscribers like i said and i cannot get there without your support if you enjoyed this video and if you learned anything from this video please just take a second and give it a thumbs up leave a comment in the comment section down below and hit that subscribe button like I mentioned, the likes and comments especially look very good for my channel and the YouTube algorithm, and that is what helps my channel grow. So I'd appreciate it if you would do that. But again, that's it for today's video. I will catch you all in the next one. Peace.